Hi, welcome back to the Camp Chaos Chronicles. On this edition of the Tuesday Extra, we're going to take a look at something that people don't give a lot of thought to, but maybe they ought to. Spark plug wires. Dang it! Now, one spark plug wire is not the same as another. There's a lot of different applications and a lot of different quality levels in spark plugs. A uh, spark plug wire is sort of a compromise. It's if you've got a streetcar that you're going to be putting them on, you have to be concerned about number one, efficient operation, and number two, that you don't get RF and electromagnetic frequency emanations coming out of this wire that interferes with the electrical systems in your car. Now, what does the spark plug wire have to do with combustion? Well, the thing is that in order to get a good energetic burning of the fuel and air mixture, you got to get it started with the proper spark. A weak, non-energetic spark is going to start the burning like a match lighting a pile of newspaper. Okay, it'll burn, but it's just not going to get going real well. Take a burns -o -matic tor torch to the newspaper, much better. So it takes a certain amount of time for that burning to take place. And if it doesn't get started real fast, it's not going to burn completely by the time the fire goes out when the piston's coming down the other side. So you need to have as much energy, electrical energy, getting to the end of that spark plug wire to the plug as possible to get that good, strong initiation of burning for the most efficient combustion of the fuel and air mixture as possible. So let's take a look at some plug wire sets here. This one is representative of the set that I put on Old Tex last summer. Got it off of the $40 engine that I bought out of a backyard in North, North Minneapolis. And they look good, but they are, in fact, junk. This set is a good OEM type that has been used for quite some time, but still appears to be in good shape. And then we got the blue set over there, the MagnaCore set that I am replacing the junk set with. Now, how do we know these are junk? Well, first of all, I got to Colorado, got to Denver, and the car that had been running smoothly for about 7,000 miles now suddenly started missing, particularly at idle. And so I'd get out and I'd twiddle around with the boots at the distributor and at the spark plugs, and it'd come back, but about 300 miles later or less, this would happen all over again. So I decided that I was going to replace these. The conductor itself probably isn't all that bad a shape, but the boots, if we peel this back, you can see that we've got a fairly significant amount of rust. And I took a Dremel with a brush on it to these and put some dielectric grease in there. And uh, I thought it was working. You know, I'm a small farmer, so I try to get by on the cheap as much as possible. Now, if we take, now what I've got here is my volt ohmmeter, And it's set to the 20,000s resistance scale. So I'm going to take my... One probe, attach it there. Another one, attach it there. And we can see that we've got about 8,000 ohms. So that's not particularly bad because OEM type wires are supposed to have about 8,000 uh, ohms per foot, give or take. So the wire, the conductor itself, isn't that bad. The issue here is if we try to go to the inside of this end right here, and the spark plug or the distributor end well now it's working before it was if we move it around it's intermittent so these need to go now what i do with these is i take these little labels off of them before i throw them away and i put them in a uh, put them in a tray and if i ever decide to build myself a set of wires i've got the labels also, I record the lengths of them. So we'll throw these over in the hall of shame. 
Now these right here, we can see that we've got a much better, I'm not gonna tear these, tear these down, but I can tell you that the conductor on the inside is shiny. It's not rusty at all. And uh, it's much better shape. And now, when you do this, that could actually puncture the boot pretty easily. And uh, what that would do is that would allow an avenue for electricity to sneak out to a much easier source of ground than a spark plug. Okay, that's 6,000 ohms. Let's try another one. Ten thousand ohms. One more, just for giggles. Eight point eight to ten thousand ohms. So that's what we'd expect from a reasonably good set of OEM wires. This set is going to go on the shelf. Now this set is MagnaCore Elec MagnaCore Electrosport 80 ignition wires. Now these have a proprietary conductor on the inside that does both the job of conducting maximum amount of electricity and suppressing the RF and EM emanations from it to protect your electrical system components. And let's see what these things do. And 3.6, 3,600 ohms. Now again, be careful that you don't pierce the, the boot. 3.9. And I've done all of these and they all are within that threshold. So we can see that these are going to allow much more, much better flow of current than even a good quality OEM set. So our obvious winner is MagnaCore. That's the good news. There is bad news, however, in that these things are going to cost about $150 per set. And that's the cheapest price that I could find. But you know what? I started swapping these for the wires that I had in the car um, before we took off to Colorado. And right away, while there was a little bit of choppiness in the idle before, that's much less now. And I am confident that when I get these on the car, that it's going to smooth right out. It's kind of like old Texas beginning to remember what it's like to be a car.